And the cholesterol converts vitamin K1 to K2, the prenyl intermediates, and they activate an enzyme that prevents calcium deposition in the blood vessels of the heart. So this is a VA study, and the VA study was done in patients who were on statins not using frequently versus those who were using frequently. When you see the people who were using statins a lot, they had more calcification. When they were followed at 4.3 years, the progression of calcium was highest in the people using statins compared to the people who were not. This is another compelling information. You take smooth muscle cells. These are cells that line the wall of the vessel and you grow them in a culture dish and you give them increasing amounts of the uh, statin drug. And what you're finding on the slide to the left of the screen here is that as the dose of statin increased, more cells were dying. Now, a picture is worth a thousand words, and in this picture, the arrows are pointing to the effects of statins that are killing the smooth muscle cells. So here is a cell that is undergoing repair, and as it undergoes repair, it puts cholesterol out into the milieu. The HDL, which looks discoid in the beginning, is there to pick up the cholesterol. It becomes spherical. And then it does this amazing thing. It transfers the cholesterol from HDL to LDL. The LDL takes the cholesterol. It is then subsequently removed by the liver through the LDL receptor. And the liver recycles the cholesterol and the protein. This is an important biologic function. But if you prevent that transfer, which is happening through the CTEP enzyme, you create something that medical, profession, medical professionals like a lot. You are increasing your HDL. You are reducing your LDL. So that's what happened in the study. So this is an Illuminate trial, about 7,500 patients in each group. The group to the left, the HDL, which is the good cholesterol, is very high, 83. The LDL is very low. A cardiologist like me would salivate over this, say, this is so good. Why are you even coming to see me? You don't need to come see me because you're going to live forever. What happened in this study? With high HDL and low LDL, more people died. More people had cancer mortality. More were hospitalized for heart failure. More had infections and more had strokes. So this is where I want to tell you how an industry-sponsored clinical trial is done. 95% of studies that are done on statins are sponsored by the, clinic, by the industry. And the industry plays the clinical site, which is at the top of the slide. About 400 sites in about 25 countries is a blockbuster study. Physicians like me at the site are paid by the industry. The industry hires a team of experts called CAC, Central Adjudicating Committee. They are paid by the pharmaceutical industry. They hire a DSM, a Data Safety and Monitoring Committee, that's designed to protect the patient who pays them. It's the pharmaceutical industry. The FDA, which is to approve new drugs, a substantial portion of their budget comes from the pharmaceutical industry. There's a revolving door between pharmaceutical industry and FDA. You would think that medical journals that take these blockbuster studies that are going to make mega profit for the industry, do, are they conflicted? Yes, they are, because when a blockbuster study is published, millions of reprints are ordered that is extremely beneficial for the statin industry and for the medical journals. You would think that American Heart Association and ACC are not conflicted, but just go to one of their meetings and see the dominance of the industry. A large portion of their budget comes from them. You would think that physicians like me are not conflicted, but they'll come and say, Dr. Ali, we think 
that you are a pretty good opinion leader in your community. You can speak. Why don't we give you about $3,000 five nights a month? And why don't you go and tell your friends and your community that this is a good drug, please use it. I urge you to go to propublica.com, put the names of the physicians. You'll be shocked to see that some physicians are earning between $100,000 to $500,000 a year speaking for the industry and promoting their drugs.